Hi, welcome back, my best chemistry students. We are going to move into a quick discussion, really a quick review of the ideal gas law. So without further ado, let's look at the three formulas that describe an ideal gas. Now, whoops, there we go. Now, what is an ideal gas? Remember I mentioned earlier that an ideal gas behaved according to those premises laid out in kinetic and molecular theory. When does that occur? Well, that occurs at lower pressures. This is one atmosphere. So at lower pressures, and this is typically, right? we're making some generalizations about pressures, relatively lower pressures. It's because at low pressures, they have what's called a large mean free path. It's really a measure of the distance between gas molecules. There won't be very many intermolecular forces experienced at low pressures, and so gas molecules you know, won't be attracting one another or possibly repelling one another. So at low pressures, they tend to behave ideally. Now, that also happens at high temperatures. Molecules are moving quickly past one another, and again, not sensing those intermolecular forces. And, and I believe we'll have time to look at that animation in class. That's my intent. So uh, let's take a look. So you should know that low pressures and high temperatures. So if you're given a series of conditions about ideal gases, you want to pick the conditions that are lowest pressure and highest temperature for it to behave according to an ideal gas. Now, the three formulas are good old Pevenert, pressure volume is equal to moles times R times T. Now, the key with the units is that volume has to be in liters, temperature has to be in Kelvin, and pressure has to match that ideal gas constant R. So if your pressure's in atmospheres, we use 0 0.0821. If your pressure's in tor, then it's 62.4. And if it's in my preference, which is kilopascals, which is the S, you know, pascals is your SI unit, it's 8.314. So just make sure you either convert pressures to atmospheres if you choose Again, I really wish, in fact, I have argued for getting rid of that, but unfortunately it's still hanging out. Um, or just simply learn these three constants. Now, remember that moles are simply equal to mass over molar mass. So if I don't have moles, or you know, I can plug right into here and put mass over molar mass, and here's another formula. Now, that said, if moles are equal to mass over molar mass, you can always do two calculations. You don't really have to memorize this formula. It's just a little easier for me personally. All right. But you can always do a one or two step problem going, you know, either from moles to Pevenert or Pevenert into moles. Often in this case, your molar mass is an unknown or possibly your mass. Um, but that's an important one. And the units are true the same. Now, if I take this formula, in, and I rearrange it and solve for molar mass. And remember, so if I solve this for molar mass, I'd get mass RT over V times P, right? Well, mass over volume is simply density. And so that's how we would get that formula. So you can again derive that if you want to, or you can memorize it. And I was at the reading once, and uh, one of the, uh, the readers there, and I, and I put this cute little, what I thought was a cute little picture in there. Uh, she calls this the meow meow, well, similar to this. This is the meow meow equation. It's meow meow because cats put dirt, D-R-T, over their pee. I'm not saying it's a pleasant analogy, but hey, it works. So those are the formulas that you'll be using for your ideal gas law calculations. But what if we don't have an ideal gas? What if there are intermolecular forces, for example? Or what if there's a significant, such a significant amount of gas that um, 
the volume becomes and the volume of the gas becomes a critical factor. Well, there are many, many ways that we can model non-ideal gases. We're just going to look at one particular example. So what if it's not obeying the kinetic molecular theory? And like I said, the two premises most likely uh, to cause deviation are the factor that gases do have attractions, many of them. Yeah, maybe not hydrogen, maybe it doesn't have a whole lot, but water, wow, water has hydrogen bonding, very strong attraction. You know, hydrogen's only London dispersion, and water has hydrogen bonding, so given the same pressures, you would certainly expect to see greater deviations. And so this is your observed pressure, and this would be a correction to account for the fact that there are intermolecular forces. So this would be your PV is equal to nRT. So there's simply correction factors to the ideal gas law. And this corrects for molar volume or molecular volume. For, for very, very large gases and or gases that are really squished tightly together. Okay, and both of these are going to happen at high pressures. You're going to squish uh, gases together, so they'll sense that intermolecular force, right? Whoops. They'll sense that intermolecular force, right? And they'll start to take up a, the volume of the gas will uh, take up a significant amount. In other words, the volume of the gas will no longer be much, much, much less than the volume of the container and so we can't ignore it anymore. This also happens at low, very low temperatures. So it's non-ideal. I just said it the opposite of what we had above, right? Okay, non-ideal. So this shows a, a ideal gas graft, right? You should know pressure versus volume, right? And then this shows a real gas and you see those deviations up here especially at high pressures. Once we got to low pressures those curves start to become closer and closer together. So the greatest you increase the deviation from ideal at high pressures. Okay, And this is another way to do this if you take PV over RT right? an ideal gas would be a straight line here versus pressure and the greater the intermolecular forces, the more it deviates, right? So ammonia deviates because of that hydrogen bonding. It deviates continuously. Okay, CH4, London dispersion forces. So as you get to higher and higher pressures, you start to see more and more deviations. So those constants are tabulated. You won't be doing calculations with this. This is more of a qualitative understanding of one way to talk about ideal gases. One more left, kiddos. Until then, this is signing off.